Hello. Welcome to Hello. Hyper Believe VR 2020's Mozilla Hubs Cloud, where many of you are watching right now. To start, we'd like to briefly tell you how we got here. Uh, we plan to be welcoming you to Atlanta. We had a wonderful main venue selected in the heart of Midtown Atlanta. We had a, this, a really beautiful venue. You can see our hotel here. You can see what the lobby would have looked like. We had a beautiful banquet and a visit planned for you to the Georgia Aquarium and a truly exciting program that was planned for you over the course of the last two years. Perhaps what we were most excited about though um, was a complimentary online experience that would increase the reach of our community. But of course, plans change. Our world has been shifted and so we moved with it. In a very short span of about a week, after seeing many major conferences cancel or postpone, we developed a plan and had that plan approved to transform our complimentary into what you all experienced a little yesterday and will fully experience over the course of the next few days. Transitioning required the brave and the full support of our steering committee of the IEEE, the IEEE Computer Society, and the IEEE VGTC, who have enabled us to start this journey well before we had to officially cancel our conference, despite the inherent risks and financial repercussions. And to actually do this required the tremendous efforts on the part of a large and highly international conference committee of dedicated volunteers who all thought that their work was done, only to now need to put in countless additional hours. We can't thank you all enough without you. This conference that we all love just wouldn't have happened this year. The website doesn't even include the huge number of volunteers that have stepped up in the last two weeks, including the many student volunteers that you'll find moderating your slide of questions, helping in hubs, and coordinating our live streams. Um, in particular, I'd like to call out one of our conference chairs, uh, Ed Swan, who made it his personal crusade to get these, those proceedings that you have now, which include over 400 papers and abstracts in place in the digital library this year without delay. And of course, thank you to our academic and industry partners that you see up on the wall here. Um, these sponsors have really stuck with us uh, through this difficult time and have embraced the virtual event. Now, Blair and I are especially thrilled um, with how our home universities, the University of Georgia and Georgia Tech, have stepped up as gold and silver sponsors. Uh, and here to welcome you all are some of our administration. Uh, first up, uh, we have uh, my dean, the dean of the College of Engineering at the University of Georgia, Don Leo. Uh, and following him will be uh, Dean uh, Charles Davis of the Grady College of Journalism and Mass Communication, uh, who is uh, our other key partner working with uh, Grace Ahn and her laboratory. And so I'm going to let Dean Leo say a few words now. Hello, everyone. My name is Don Leo, and I have the honor of serving as the Dean of the College of Engineering at the University of Georgia. All of us at UGA would like to extend a warm welcome to everyone joining us from around the world for IEEE VR 2020. I, like many of you, am sheltering in place at home. It's unfortunate that you can't join us in person because we had an incredible week planned for you in Atlanta. You shouldn't be disappointed because you are about to join us in creating a historical moment where we are hosting the first major academic conference to be held in virtual reality. We're delighted to support and sponsor the cutting edge effort made possible through the extraordinary collaboration between academic institutions and industry partners. These are unprecedented times with a sudden global need to stay physically distant yet collaborate more closely, virtual, augmented, and mixed realities have become even more relevant to us than ever before. Through the new findings shared during the conference and the expanded social network created through interacting in virtual reality, we expect that IEEE VR 2020 will play a critical role in exploring these uncharted territories. The University of Georgia has proudly stood at the forefront of investigating the societal impact of these emerging technologies addressing big problems that need big solutions, such as public health, climate change, informatics, and cybersecurity. Please take a moment to visit our virtual sponsor room to learn more about our university, our College of Engineering, and the interdisciplinary VR research taking place here. 
I want to take a moment and thank all of the people who helped organize this meeting and all of our sponsors. I'm especially proud of Dr. Kyle Johnson and his team for their leadership at the University of Georgia and for their hard work to transform the on-site conference into a virtual meeting in a short amount of time. Now more than ever, we need to find creative ways to continue collaborating, and this meeting is a shining example of how we can make that happen. Greetings from Grady College. I'm Dean Charles Davis, sheltering in place at my house, ironically enough, three doors down from Dean Leo. Grady College is honored to participate in this important gathering of some of the world's leading VR academics. We're particularly proud of our very own Dr. Grace Ahn, who has helped position the college at the forefront of VR research. Dr. Ahn's lab conducts an impressive array of research studies that are helping us better understand the ways this important technology can be used for improving the lives of others, a futuristic technology whose importance has certainly been underscored by the events of the past few days. Although we're not together physically today, we hope that you'll demonstrate to the world how VR can help us transcend the boundaries of time and space so that we may continue to connect and communicate with others. We can't wait to hear more about the important discoveries and insights uncovered at this conference. We hope you have a wonderful time. Go dogs. All right, Blair, do you want to introduce your uh, administration? Hi. Sure, Kyle. Uh, I'd like to uh, uh, provide a little welcome from uh, Dr. Uh, Chawi Abdallah, the Executive Vice President of Research at Georgia Tech. Dr. Abdallah uh, oversees all of Georgia Tech and the Georgia Tech Research Institute's uh, $1 billion research portfolio, economic activity, development activities, and the research across the 11 interdisciplinary research institutes at uh, Georgia Tech. So, Dr. Abdallah. Hello, and good morning. My name is Shawi Abdallah, and I'd like to welcome you to the IEEE VR 2020 from Georgia Tech. We're looking forward to hosting you here in Atlanta. And while we're disappointed you will not be visiting with us in person, we're very excited to help make the online experience of VR 2020 a success. Virtual, augmented, and mixed reality are being used in research and education throughout Georgia Tech, including very much in this situation. Exciting examples include using virtual reality to train healthcare workers and first responders who benefit from environments that simulate the stress and diversity of these clinical and very critical jobs. Creating augmented reality environments to improve the performance of physical tasks from food inspection to managing the growing number of smart sensors, monitoring public infrastructure, and in designing new mixed reality experience for STEM education and distance learning. Today, we are looking for these technologies to help us keep connected during the current health crisis. However, we are fortunate that we were on this important path as we also seek to address longer term climate change challenges through reducing the need for travel. We hope you will enjoy the conference, meet new people across the globally connected network, and most importantly, learn about new research and technologies to bring virtual reality technologies to widespread use to meet both the urgent needs of the day and the long term needs of society. Thank you so much. Welcome again to Georgia Tech. Hello. Also, we want to thank our bronze sponsors, the Georgia Center for Innovation and Manufacturing, our sister institution, Kennesaw State University in Atlanta, uh, Microsoft, who's also a doctoral consortium sponsor, uh, Pico, uh, and of course, Mozilla, who's also provided many hours of additional support for the unique hubs experience we're in right now. Uh, recently, we were delighted to count uh, AWS as a sponsor. It's provided the backend cloud infrastructure uh, for this hubs experience, uh, and also supporting this event, our academic partners at Emory, and the University of Mississippi, as well as industry, uh, Vimeo, and Fake Space Labs, who sponsored our 3D UI contest this year. Uh, finally, we're extremely appreciative for uh, NSF's uh, sponsorship of yesterday's uh, doctoral consortium, which was a great success and continues with our post and se poster sessions uh, today, tomorrow, and the next day. Uh, and now I'm going to actually hand it off to Blair, the mastermind behind this online experience. Hey, thanks, Kyle. So, um, where are you, Anton? Okay, so uh, today uh, we don't want to talk too much about all the details. Uh, if you're in uh, hubs, uh, check, look 
uh, for Kyle or I or any of our volunteers. Uh, if you're still over on uh, Slack trying to get in, reach out for help. We really want to encourage you to take advantage of this opportunity to experiment with an online social conference. For the first time, we have a critical mass of people in an online experience. Unlike the original experience we'd planned, uh, where uh, we were helping people who couldn't otherwise be here. Now, everyone who would otherwise be attending the conference is here. All the people you might want to talk to and meet will hopefully be online. And, uh, and so uh, when you're in the viewing rooms, take a moment to turn and say hi to people around you. Think of it as uh, being in the conference hall or in the hallway between sessions. Uh, meet people. Uh, we've created a few uh, social rooms that you could go into. A few of our sponsors and more will have social rooms set up. Uh, they're at the top set on the uh, IEEE.br.online website. So pop into those rooms, say hi to the sponsors, and just chat with people. Pretend you're in the hallways and you'd like to look around. The social experience only really works if everyone is actually social. Um, stay in the uh, meeting rooms and uh, uh, chat with the people before and after sessions uh, and so on. We're also running uh, birds of a feather and social sessions. So if there's a topic you'd like to discuss, whether it's uh, the you know meetup of European researchers, which already has a boff up, or people who want to chat about jazz music and uh, have their favorite beverage at home in the evening, create a boff uh, using the form we provided and uh, we'll list it so you can find each other. Uh, and generally try to uh, really engage with the conference. The big challenge with online conferences is the pull of our daily lives. It's a huge advantage for us to be able to have dinner with our families, tuck our kids into bed, uh, and depending on your time zone, that may be happening right in the middle of the of the day. But but you know, skip your regular meetings just like you would if you were at at this this conference in Atlanta. Try to uh, find ways to engage with people and take advantage of us all being uh, here online together. So uh, with that, we'll go back over and uh, continue with the welcome. All right, awesome. Great job, Blair. Uh, back to... All right, we're back in reality. Uh, thank you so much, Blair. Uh, and the uh, the next part of our uh, program today is our program chairs. And so I'm gonna hand it off uh, now to them. Okay, thank you, Kyle. So let's start with the journal paper tracks. And uh, we were five program chairs that could introduce themselves. Joe? Nobody is in, so. <laughs> I'm on, I'm here. Yeah, I yes, think you can introduce yourself. <laughs> uh, I, I, apologies, my apologies. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Joe Gabbard from Virginia Tech where I study human factors and human computer interaction. Uh, I just wanna let everyone know that uh, having followed VR through the years, I'm very excited that uh, we're continuing on a, on a path that really is uh, more inclusive of other disciplines outside of the traditional sort of programming and computer science disciplines. And we're seeing more and more papers from across this space. So even though we are physically isolated a little bit more, a lot more than we would like to be this year, I really encourage you to embrace the interdisciplinary nature of the conference this year and attend as many of these exciting research talks as you can. Thank you. Next one. <laughs> Yeah, maybe this is me. So uh, hello to all of you. This is uh, Thorsten speaking from Aachen University, Germany. 
yeah, uh, what should I say? Actually, it was my great pleasure to serve as uh, Journal Papers Program Co-Chair again. In fact, this is the second time in this role now for me, so it's time to retire. And yeah, I wish us all a great conference. Thank you. And then Anthony? Oh, you like him. Hello all, my name is Joaquin George and I am um, uh, talking to you from uh, Lisbon, Portugal, uh, where this, this pretty picture in my uh, background came from. I am excited to be a part of this experience. I think there is a silver lining in the present situation is the fact that VR is going to VR, which is fantastic and I'm thrilled to be a part of uh, this whole brave a new setting. And I'm also happy to announce that I will be the uh, general chair uh, in, uh, uh, of uh, VR 2021, which will hopefully take place on virtual reality and on this nice setting behind me, the Estoril Congress Center near Lisbon. So oh, you're all welcome to uh, attend this experience and you are very welcome to join us in Portugal in beautiful Lisbon next year. Thank you. And I don't know if we have Anthony with us. Hello, uh, my connection keeps dropping about every 30 seconds. So I'll be very quick. Um, yeah, so we, uh, to say that um, we were very excited with all the papers we had this year and we've, I think we've got a great uh, set of journal publications for you to, to, to look at and watch and experience and I'm, it'll be a new experience for all of us but I'm looking forward to meeting people uh, that I might not have usually hung out with at IEEE VR this year. Okay, thanks. And then, so I am Juan Marshall from University of Rennes, France. So I will start with some statistics about the journal paper track. So we had uh, 164 submissions, which represent an increase of 15% uh, so compared to last year. And among all these submissions, we accepted uh, 29 papers. So we had an acceptance rate of a little bit less than 80%. And in addition, we have also eight other papers that were recommended for TVCG directly with major revisions. Uh, this paper will not be presented this year. And uh, finally, we also have uh, nine invited TVCG paper, which correspond to paper already published in high Triple TVCG and that have been proposed to be presented during the conference this year. And so to deal with all these submissions, so we are thankful to the help of many people. So first of all, we had like 45 wonderful IPC members. Uh, and we also had uh, 330 external reviewers. No, 200, sorry. And for a total of 656 reviews in total. Uh, if we want to go into the details about the selection process, could you go the next slide? Yeah, thanks. So we proceed with a two round review process. So we had the first one where we assigned two IPC members to each submission, and the primary of each paper was also in charge of assigning two external reviewers for each paper. So it results that each submission had at least four full reviews for the journal paper track. Then uh, our reviewing period was uh, one month long and then followed by a discussion phase where the four reviewers had to choose a recommendation between conditionally accept, reject, or need for additional reviews. And uh, for this paper with, uh, where we needed additional reviews, so we had a second round of reviews where we assigned additional IPC member and we had a new discussion phase after this uh, new reviewing period and the primary of each paper had to do a final recommendation. And with this recommendation, so the final decision were made by the program chair at the end and we had notification in, in November. Then uh, all the conditionally accepted paper went through a second round review cycle after the consideration and approval of the TVCG board and uh, the review of the modified version were performed by the IPC member only, and we rejected papers that did not meet the requested modification asked by the reviewer. And final decision were sent at the end of January. So to do all this selection pro process, so we, we will particularly thank all the IPC member for their work. So usually IPC member are asked to stand up during the opening session, 
which uh, of course is not the case, to, is not possible today, but please uh, at least raise your virtual hand if you are in a hub room or whatever. And uh, uh, we would like also uh, to warmly thank the Virtual Reality Steering Committee for the, their valuable advice and leadership. And also we'd like to thank Klaus Muller, the Editor-in-Chief of the TVCD, as well as Doug Bowman, the Associate Editor-in-Chief for making the, the special uh, TVCG issue possible. And finally, we would like also to thank the general chair for their great job for making this event happening, even with uh, the current situations. And we hope that you will enjoy the conference. Thanks. And then, um, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how we, um, what we did in the conference track to determine our papers. So first, um, our great conference uh, program committee chairs, if each of you who are on could uh, quickly introduce yourself, starting with Gerd. Hello everyone, my name is Gerd Bruder. I'm uh, working at the University of Central Florida and I believe we have a great team. We have a great program for everyone. And I'm looking forward to seeing and meeting you all online this year and uh, maybe drinking a virtual beer this time with everyone who happens to be in the social meeting rooms. Hi, uh, I'm Helge Skopper. I'm also one of the program uh, co-chairs for the conference program. And I welcome all of you to this exciting new venue. I'm at University of North Carolina at Greensboro. And I'm excited to experiment this new format, which will is it's kind of a trial by fire for all of us today, and uh, but I think it's going to be very exciting. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Ronald Pelaget, a research scientist at Equilibria in France, France. I'm basically I will be the researcher for Qfine. Everyone who made this uh, all this process so smooth, and it seems that everything is prepared uh, perfectly uh, as everything is working today. So. Thank you, everyone, and see you around in VR. Um, I don't know if Mark is on the line. Uh, Christian, are you here? And I know Zubo's here. Hi, uh, I'm Shuba Yang from Shanghai Jiao University of China. Uh, I'm glad to uh, be able to serve for the community and uh, it's a good, good writing experience for me to work together with all, all these colleagues and uh, I welcome you to the new experience of these conferences. I think this uh, VR in VR is a very special experience for everybody and uh, I think in the future this could be a very uh, good direction to work on. Okay, thank you for all of you. Yeah, and thank you to the, this great committee and to the general chairs for everything they've done. Um, I'm Tabitha Peck and I'm at Davidson College in North Carolina. Uh, so an overview of what happened for the conference track. We had 468 submissions, which is 10% more than last year. And we accepted 104 of those papers. Um, that process consisted of um, 569 external reviewers and um, 90 international program committee members who, and without the, all of these reviewers, this would not have been possible. Um, they generated uh, 1,878 reviews over um, of these papers. Uh, the way that we did this was we broke it down into topic areas so that um, that we could actually manage all of these submissions between the seven chairs. Um, and so we had three topic areas where each of the papers was then placed into each one of these. So we had technologies and applications, interaction and multi-sensory experiences. And the paper authors uh, said which paper, which topic area they thought their paper most um, best fit into as well as a second choice. And then we distributed them across those three tracks. Once they were in those tracks, um, the International Program Committee first took a look at them to make sure that the papers uh, met some initial criteria before moving into the review phase. 
um, where uh, all of those reviews ended up ha happening. Then there was a discussion phase between the, um, the IPC members and the reviewers of each of the papers to come to a decision. Um, and then finally, uh, the chairs within our subcommittees, we met and discussed each paper um, that was uh, each of the papers to look at all of the reviews and the general, the discussions and the consensus between the reviewers. Finally, all of the chairs got together and met for one final meeting where we went through all of the papers to make the final decision, each of them, whether they were conditionally accepted, recommended for a poster or recommended for rejection. And this, um, we needed our, our program committee. So a huge thanks to to all of the people who were part of our program committee. This, um, this conference could not exist right now without you um, and all of your hard work to work through these papers to create a great, uh, a great program for everybody. So a huge thank you to all of you. All right, well, thank you program chairs. Uh, it takes uh, an army of people to really make this, this uh, paper program happen and just a tremendous number of hours from the rest of the community. So thank you all so, so much. Um, and so now I'd like to, to hand it off to our uh, BGTC awards group. Um, we have Dr. Henry Fuchs uh, from the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill here today and Dr. Doug Bowman from Virginia Tech. Each of them uh, handles a committee uh, that uh, hands out some of the, or at least uh, selects, uh, not from nominated uh, uh, researchers, uh, two of our important awards for the community. And so I'm gonna hand it off to Henry uh, to start and talk about the Career and Technical Achievement Awards. Good morning. Um, I'm Henry Fuchs. I'm happy to be presenting the uh, awards for uh, technical achievement and for career awards. Um, this is a, a long tradition uh, here at the community. As you can see, here are the uh, previous award winners uh, for many years. There are two technical awards. As you can see, one for technical achievement for somebody who's made a significant contribution to the field, and second for career award for a lifetime contribution. You can see this has been going on for many years, and I'm happy to be able to announce this year's winners. Let me tell you first about the selection process. Uh, anybody can nominate anybody by sending email to the following email address. If you just look for VGTC IEEE VR Awards, you'll find the right place for this. Um, the awards committee membership changes each year. The members remain anonymous. Only the chair um, is public, uh, myself. And each year's award committee decides its own process. Uh, this year, um, the committee had a two-stage process. First, uh, people voted for finalists, five finalists. Um, they were not allowed to vote for anybody they had a conflict with, conflict defined in the usual way, um, as many conferences have uh, conflicts that we have to uh, uh, abide by. And the ballots were all secret. Um, the final voting was by instant runoff, uh, rank preferential voting. Many of you know about this. Uh, you could look it up any place. Uh, basically, people vote on their first, second, third, fourth, fifth choices for uh, the award. The ballots were done secretly and counted independently. 
by two non-committee appointees, and then they got together to uh, um, count the uh, uh, ballots, and they announced to the committee the uh, winner in each category, and I as chair um, chose not to vote in the final voting. So without further ado, I'm happy to announce that the 2020 Virtual Augmented Reality Technical Achievement Award goes to Professor Jeremy Balenson from Stanford University in recognition of his research on psychological effects of virtual reality experiences. Congratulations, Jeremy. You should hear about a thousand of us clapping for you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Thank you. Thank you, Henry, so much for that introduction. For me, uh, winning this award is, is, is extremely special, but it's also very special to get introduced by you. Uh, early in my career in 2005, one of my uh, fondest memories academically was going to visit UNC uh, and learning from you, learning from Greg Welch uh, and Fred Brooks and getting to see your lab. As, as an early scholar, you provided great guidance and I, I consider you a mentor. So. Today, for the next six minutes, what I'm going to do is answer the question, how does somebody from a communication department end up winning an IEEE Technical Achievement Award? So my PhD was in cognitive science in the late 1990s. My dissertation <clears throat> was on natural language processing, running experiments, on humans to understand how uh, uh, humans perceived arguments and then building models to account for that. But I took a class from a guy named David Utah. And in the class, I studied how people make decisions on routes, how spatial navigation works in the brain, published a couple papers on that. And based on those publications, was lucky enough to get an interview with the great Jack Loomis at the University of California, Santa Barbara. Jack uses virtual reality to study human perception how the visual system works, things like distance estimation. Uh, so I go and I interview with Jack to uh, move to Santa Barbara to use VR to study vision and perception. About three weeks later, I'm sitting in my uh, apartment in Chicago. Uh, it's freezing cold and I get a phone call from uh, the great Jim Blaskovich pictured here in the V8, uh, the virtual research V8 that many of you might recognize. And Jim says, Jeremy, I've got bad news for you and I've got good news. The bad news is you didn't get the job. Uh, the good news is because you and I hit it off well during the interview process, if you want to switch fields and become a social psychologist and come work with me, we can study how the psychology of avatars works and we can uh, do something a little bit different. And so it took me about 15 minutes to decide that I was going to leave cognitive science and go work with Jim Blaskovich. Uh, what we've discovered in two decades to kind of preempt what I'll talk about for the next four minutes is VR offers these fantastical experiences. You can do things you can't do in the real world, but the brain on default tends to treat these experiences as if they were real. So what my work has done for two decades is build experiences one cannot do in the VR, but then study how the automatic social response causes people to treat these experiences as if they were real. With Blaskovich, we spent a lot of time doing psychophysics studies. So uh, for example, plotting personal space data, interpersonal distance, and doing these very dense psychophysics studies to understand how locomotion works in VR, how navigation works in VR. On the right there, you can see Andy Beal, who taught me how to do 
all of my coding and hardware work back then. Uh, and I like showing this classroom because every study we'd have to run back then, we would have to clear out a classroom. We then have to install tracking cameras and spend uh, over an hour and a half doing the calibration for those that remember how to calibrate these tracking systems. Just to collect four or five studies, we'd be spending six or seven hours just on setup. It was a big job. In 2003, I was lucky enough to get recruited by Clifford Nass to Stanford and my thinking switched. I, I no longer wanted to think about VR as a tool to study the brain, but let's study VR as a medium itself. And this is uh, Dr. Clifford Nass, uh, my faculty mentor, one of the best media scholars ever to live. This is my lab at Stanford. Uh, it's an amazing physical destination where we've got all sorts of, of, of advances uh, technologically, but really what makes the lab special is the people. And so for the next two and a half minutes, I'm going to talk about the amazing PhD students I've gotten to work with. Nicholas Yi, my first student, uh, coined the term the Proteus Effect and graduated with about 20 publications, all showing that when you walk up to a virtual mirror and we change your identity, we can make you taller and you get more aggressive, make you more attractive, you become more social, make you older and you show more compassion for the aged, your embodiment, your avatar changes how you act, not just in VR, how you act later on. Jesse Fox took a different route and she studied what's called doppelgangers. And these subjects would come to the lab. We would scan their faces and build 3D avatars uh, using photogrammetry. And then we'd have people see themselves as if in from the third person and they'd get to see themselves looking just like them doing something they've never done. And so it's as if seeing yourself in a mirror and then the mirror takes on a new life. Uh, currently we call this deep fakes. Back then there was no word for it. Jesse showed that when you see yourself exercising, compared to seeing someone else exercise, uh, you're more likely to exercise in the physical world. Catherine Segovia studied doppelgangers in children and showed that when kids came into VR and saw themselves embodied in, in an avatar and doing something novel, in this case, swimming with whales, a week later, about half of them would form false memories. Grace Ahn, uh, who was just mentioned by the Dean of Grady College, an amazing scholar, uh, took this further and really studied the mechanism of, of embodiment and embodied cognition, and which her research showed is the body movements involved in, say, cutting down a tree cause you to later on uh, resonate with that message. So subjects who cut down virtual trees were more likely to save paper in the real world compared to those who simply watched a video. Andrew Stevenson Wan uh, was brave enough to build and test Jaron Lanier's idea of homuncular flexibility and takes this notion of embodiment and says, well, what if you have a body that humans could never have, in this case, three arms? And what Andrew showed is how the brain adjusts to these very strange avatar bodies and how people can adapt in terms of productivity to having avatars which have new functions like three arms. Catherine O oh studied network avatar communication and this notion of transformed social interaction. Well, what if avatars can be better than humans? And in this case, what she did is put a gain factor on smiles. So a number of people enter VR and we're tracking their faces and imagine that everyone's smile got tweaked up with a gain factor by 20%. She showed that people in these communications speak more positively and have higher emotions later on compared to normal avatars. Jackie Bailey is now the world's expert on studying VR and kids. She's now run hundreds of children, all, all in the age range of three, four, five, or six years old. And Jackie's demonstrated the cognitive development trends and things we need to watch out for when it comes to young kids and VR. Fernanda Herrera has run uh, the canonical study on VR and empathy at thousands of subjects now across uh, a few studies she's run, looking at the, the, the longitudinal, the long-term effects of using these VR empathy demos and showing behavioral outcomes, for example, signing a petition to help the homeless uh, months after uh, being in VR and comparing that to control conditions. VR is now working at scale. So one of my students, Derek Belch, created a system for his master's thesis where he was using VR to train quarterbacks. He then formed a company. The company is now being used with millions of people across the United States, over between one and two million people. For example, you can see in this image, we installed 17,000 VR training systems, three or four systems in every single Walmart. Uh, and the past year, a million people have used VR to train, you know, embodying a lot of the research principles that the people on this program committee uh, have discussed throughout their careers. Um, a lot of amazing current students and scholars, just to give them a thank you and a shout out. Uh, I really wanted to focus on the students because they're the ones that do all the brilliant work. I will close uh, by saying, this is our moment. You're gonna hear a lot of narratives today about 
We are doing this virtual and that's amazing. We're going to solve climate change. We're going to uh, allow people to telecommute in ways that are going to increase productivity. But let's take a moment and think about the mistakes that the world of social media has made. Things like privacy, things like uh, overuse and addiction. This is our moment and let's be thoughtful about it. So uh, I can't wait to watch the rest of this conference and let's keep in mind that we are the ones that are guiding this ship and let's do it in a way that's thoughtful and responsible. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jeremy. We have uh, one final award for this technical award uh, presentation, and that is for lifetime achievement, lifetime contributions to our field. I'm happy to announce that the 2020 Career Award goes to Victoria Interrante, of University of Minnesota. Congratulations, Vicki. My final word, I remind you all, as I've said, that I as chair chose not to take part in these final votings, so I have nothing but pleasant prize, but nothing to do with choosing of the these two award winners. Victoria, take it away. Um, it says I can't start my screen share. So I, I want to say um, thank you so much to, to everyone. I'm going to keep this really short. Um, a brief timeline. I started in computer science in 1980 after arriving there from a rather circuitous path. Spent 10 years at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, um, where I was advised by Henry Fuchs, who was very patient with me as I tried to figure out how to um, use insights from visual perception to, um, to figure out how to illustrate uh, transparent services. After that, I moved to ICASE at NASA Langley where I did um, work on fluid flow visualization, um, also using insights from perception to 
informed visualization design. Um, after that, I moved to the University of Minnesota, where I continued to work on perception inspired visualization methods and started to try to build community around this topic, um, culminating in the uh, initiation of the ACM Symposium on Applied Perception, uh, now uh, in its 16th year. Uh, around 2002 is when my research started to shift to virtual reality uh, with a long-standing collaboration with Professor Lee Anderson from the Department of Architecture. Uh, I did a lot of work in, uh, on the topic of facilitating accurate spatial perception in virtual environments, which is really important for architectural applications. Um, this is some of my, my more recent uh, work. And I also did a little bit uh, with locomotion in VR. Um, I, I've got kind of like, I, I know that's really short, but I wanted to keep this to two minutes. Um, I, and now I just want to say thank you to my advisors, my committee members for my PhD, uh, to, the, to everyone who worked with me in my early career, and to my co-authors in the VR community. Um, I also want to thank my current co-PIs and advisees who keep my life really fun and my family family is is a wonderful source of of support and encouragement and to to all of you so this is a slide that i made when i gave a talk to some high school uh women high school students talking about why to become a professor and to me the most important and fun part of of being in this field is the community. This is just a subset of the places I've, my job has taken me over the past three years. And, um, and, and this is, it, it's, it's you all that, that make this so much fun. And I really hope we can continue to go all over the world. Um, thank you. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Doug Bowman from Virginia Tech, and it's my pleasure to present the VGTC VR Best Dissertation Award this morning. Uh, before I jump into that, I just want to add my thanks uh, to Kyle and Blair and all the other organizers for uh, for setting up this this conference uh, and the Herculean efforts they 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 made over the last uh, couple of weeks. So, um, next time you see them in person, give them a pat on the back or a hug or buy them a beer. Um, so uh, the VR Best Dissertation Award um, is awarded every year to the author of the best doctoral dissertation in, in the field of VR broadly defined. So VR, AR, mixed reality, uh, and other related fields. Um, the, the way that we do this is that dissertations that have been defended in the previous two calendar years are eligible. We want to give uh, people two chances to win this award because they have so much excellent work in the field. And because of that, and because of the timing of the conference, the award lags a bit uh, from where we are now. So we're presenting the 2019 award today. Uh, and that means that these are dissertations that were defended either in uh, 2017 or 2018. Um, here's the award committee. Uh, so uh, we had 12 uh, amazing experts uh, from around the world uh, who participated on the award committee this year. And you see their names there. Normally, I would make them all stand up at this point. Uh, when you see them, give them a pat on the back as well. Uh, these guys uh, put in lots of time and effort. Um, uh, as you'll see, uh, each of these committee members has to read in full uh, at, least, uh, at least four to five dissertations uh, in order to, um, uh, to complete the work of the committee. So here's our process. Uh, we received nominations that were due uh, back in May of last year. 
um, which included a, a short summary of the significance of the dissertation, a, an advisor's recommendation letter, a list of publications that came from the dissertation, and the full dissertation document. Um, we received 12 uh, nominations this year, all of which were uh, outstanding and amazing. Um, and so it's very difficult to, to make choices among them. Um, each nomination was reviewed in full by three non-conflicted committee members and rated on a three-point scale. Then we took the three uh, top uh, uh, rated dissertations and had the full committee read and rank those except for those who were conflicted. Um, so before I announce uh, the award for 2019, uh, for, uh, for this year, I wanna um, note that the, uh, the next year's award uh, will be following the same process. So nominations are due uh, on May the 1st and you can send those to me and it's for dissertations defended in 2018, 2019. All right, so with that, let me move to the awards themselves. Um, so first of all, we have two honorable mentions. Um, the committee felt that these were very much worthy of recognition, uh, and so we wanted to recognize those folks here. Um, so without further ado, the first honorable mention goes to Mahdi Asmandian. Uh, Mahdi did his dissertation at the University of Southern California, advised by Evan Suma Rosenberg, and his work was entitled Design and Evaluation of Adaptive Redirected Walking Systems. So Mahdi, congratulations, and I'd invite you to say a few words. Thank you, this is truly an honor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doug. I think if there's a lesson to be learned from my experience, it's that if there's ever a time not to practice social distancing, it's with your PhD committee. It's never too early to get your committees assembled and keep them up to date on your progress. Looking back at my dissertation, I can really sense the influence of each and every member of my committee on shaping the narrative. From Mary Witten, who helped me redesign everything from the ground up, to Mark Bolas, who would use his eccentric interview style to get you to think deeply about your message. I later found out this was to offset his guilt for raiding my snack supply when pulling all-nighters. I'm grateful for all the help I received from our mentor-like postdoc, Timothy Gretchkin, my good friend, Reese Yahata, and above all, Evan Sumer Rosenberg, my PhD advisor, who demonstrated true patience putting up with me and my incessant barrage of questions. Thank you, Evan. And I'm so sorry you were heartbroken after I left the lab. You just had to leave all the memories behind and move to Minnesota. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Madi, and congratulations again. Thank you. Um, we have a second honorable mention. And so that goes to James Baumeister, uh, who did his dissertation entitled Toward Consistent Measurement of Cognitive Load and Augmented Reality Research at the University of South Australia advised by Bruce, Tom Bruce Thomas. So congratulations, James, and I'd invite you to say a few words. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's an honor for me as well. Uh, firstly, uh, thank you very much to VGTC and the VR conference for the award, and also for making the conference work during these crazy times. The first person I'd like to thank is my supervisor, Bruce Thomas. Bruce taught me the secret workings of academia. He opened doors to opportunities that would not have been possible without him. He pushed me to work harder and better, and together we built lasting and fruitful collaborations that led to all the exciting research that we still do together. Uh, next is my co-supervisor, Ross Smith. All his technical input and interesting and provoking viewpoints really helped refine my work. Uh, to all my mentors over in the psych departments, thank you so much for all your direction. And lastly, thank you to all my family and friends, but especially to my comrade in the trenches, Naveen El Said, for keeping me sane during all those long nights working. Thank you very much. Congratulations, James, thank you. And so finally, we get to the, uh, the winner of the award for uh, the best VR dissertation. And I'm very pleased to announce that the award this year goes to Chi Sun uh, for his work, Computational Methods for Immersive Perception, which he performed at Stony Brook University under the supervision of Ari Kaufman. Congratulations, Chi. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And I believe he has a few slides that he will uh, share with us uh, to tell us a little bit about his work. Sure. I will make a very quick uh, award share. So, can I see my screen, guys? So, really, uh, thanks everyone for the award. And uh, I'm going to go through that real quick because we're kind of a little running all the time. So this is a setup of virtual reality, right? So my research mostly to split up, uh, to separate it. 
Uh, one side of my research uh, during the PhD focused on the uh, display side, what are the next generation of display, uh, how should we look through things? And also the other part on the perception side, how do we properly evaluate and study the humans, uh, human vision, human retina, and human brain? I want to bridge, uh, make a bridge uh, between them for the better uh, immersive media in the future. So one side of my research focused on the display technologies and also the human vision, how do we rigorously study the human retina in a cell level and build uh, the fast and comfortable display <clears throat> to answer what we see. And the other side of my PhD research focused on the locomotion side, how do we uh, redirect humans uh, walking space with the consideration of the human nature without being noticed uh, from the eye tracking, uh, from the human vision. Uh, <clears throat> this is the other side of my research. Uh, I like really to uh, uh, continue res re uh, this research and hope uh, that could contribute to the next generation of VR uh, system. Uh, beyond the research, I really uh, want to spend time on thank uh, the, the conference, the actual VR community, IEEE for awarding me this award and uh, uh, the, the committee members for their efforts on making the selection uh, and all the collaborators, uh, especially, uh, especially my advisor, Ari Kaufman and uh, all the other uh, collaborators during my PhD from both academia and industry, we made really great team. And also the funding agencies, without them, I can't really survive as a uh, grad student, as everybody knows, uh, to have my uh, uh, PhD career move smoothly financially. Uh, uh, and uh, thank everyone for the award for attending this uh, ceremony. Uh, I'd like to really uh, continue my contribution to the VR community, to the conference uh, in my future career. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Congratulations again to all the winners.